for the meeting of the Business Development Commission on August 11, 2021 at 6.35 p.m. Seeing as there is no one present from the public, unless Josh has any emergency to go in on the public, um, we'll skip by two. Um, if I could uh, call your attention to the meeting minutes from July 14th, if you could please take the time to review them and point out any errors or uh, omissions. There's a misspelling under Hampshire Historical Society. So you're looking for a place to pose. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, Jay, what was that? Could you take a roll call for quorum, please? Oh, yeah. Um, sure. Uh, Dave, you normally just add, add it down who's in there. Do you want me to do that, Jay, or should the secretary? Since we're remote, um, since you have members remote, you just have to establish that you have a, a physical quorum present. OK. Um, so if I list your name, then say present. Is that good enough, Jay? Just tell us who is present. OK, and well, that's all. OK, so uh, at the uh, at the outset of the meeting um, in person, uh, we have uh, trustee uh, village trustee Aaron Kelly is, is with us. Um, we have uh, BDC Commissioner David uh, Pizzolato um, and we have um, BDC Commissioner Susan Kopaz. Uh, and then we have uh, BDC uh, Commissioner Ryan Krajewski are present, which gives us four members present, which would give us four. Thank you. You got it. Okay. Oops. All right. Now we'll make a correction. For There's those also budget needs to be extended. Missing the T. Right. On the streets game program. This is what happens when Ryan does <laughs> the email us. Hey, I'm glad we got as far as we did. Uh, I was a little concerned about some. I opened it. Nice. Something surprise. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. that means a lot to me. Thank you. <laughs> You're kind of the master of the minutes, so I appreciate it. All right, any other uh, correction, corrections to the minutes from July 14th? Yeah, and I know you're always scanning those with a fine tooth comb. Did you find anything? No, sir. Motion to approve. <laughs> other than this gas pump spelled properly. Wait, did I have to misspell something else? <laughs> Well, if you look at the Hampshire's own, because gas pump is one word, and I don't know if that's how they spell gas pump or not. So as far as the business name. Oh, right. Gas pump garage. I don't know. It might be. Um, I think it should be two different. Okay. We will make that correction as well. All right. I've got a motion to approve on the floor of the meetings. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor of uh, oh, questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, approving the minutes from the July 14th meeting signify by saying aye. 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 All, abstain. all those opposed? And Dave abstains. Okay, uh, the motion passes. Um, all right, so uh, the next item on the agenda, um, I think we were ready to have this conversation uh, during our last meeting, um, but. Uh, David uh, took the opportunity to take his family out on vacation, and uh, hopefully you had a great time um, out there. That's wonderful. Yep. So at this point, I think it'd be a good opportunity for us to kind of pick up um, where we uh, where we, left off, uh, where we left off on that um, with those new additions. And um, Josh, can you pull up that commercial land development and put it up on the screen for the people at home to see as well? Maybe for the rest of the team to see yeah. that are present. And uh, then Dave, I'll turn the floor over to you. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, so we're uh, after our last meeting in June. June, uh, I took everyone's feedback and just kind of built on um, the overall commercial um, strategy as it relates to BDC recommendation for zoning and planning. Um, I just want to go through the final scope of that and then um, get everyone's feedback on that to, with the goal that if it is good, um, will then proceed in presenting it to zoning and, and planning or planning and zoning um, subsequently. Then, Excuse me, which document did you want? It's the commercial, commercial land development. The one from the comprehensive plan or one that you That's the one that was in the yeah. And it was included in the uh, invite. Okay. Yeah, it's titled commercial yeah. planning. I'm trying to get Karen in here. She's still in trouble.
at the way the improvements of the counter colors blue looks great. Looks good. I'm um, sorry, the invite I have only on the agenda and the document about in person quorums. The one from Jay. I don't have it. another invite. Okay, I will send it to you two seconds. We'll get there eventually, guys. Brian, I sent Karen the invitation a few minutes ago, if that's what you're looking for. Yeah, and no, I, I sent it to her a couple times, and for whatever reason, she's uh, she's struggling with it. So. She's not, she's not I just call in number as well. Maybe that's you. Oh, here she comes. Karen, thank you for joining us. Sorry for the trouble. No, I'm I'm so sorry, but I appreciate it. Thank you, and um, hi everybody. Hi. Good, 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 good. How's everyone? Oh, I just got your email. Anyway, please continue. <laughs> okay, we're uh, I'm working on getting uh, over to um, Josh the uh... got it. There you go, Josh. All right, Josh, you should have it in a second. Okay, excellent. So, Karen, just to bring you up to speed, we went through and approved the minutes from July 14th, um, and uh, we are moving on to item number five in the agenda where we're going to review the notes um, and document that was put together by uh, Commissioner Pizzolato regarding uh, commercial land development for the, you know, for the future comprehensive uh, uh, plan. Perfect. So, you get that, Josh? Yep, that should be us. Perfect. All right. Okay. So go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, one from the top one. Yep. There we go. So the overall objective is, as we see development increase within Hampshire, um, the BDC wants to review the commercial zoning as outlined in the 04 comprehensive plan and recommend updates um, to coincide with that for CASA needs as development grows. So the, we broke down, as you remember, uh, the village into numerous sections, um, north, east, west, and south, as well as downtown. So. Let's go through that. So starting with the north um, up around 20. So the areas of focus were the property labeled as number one. That is a former uh, Shireland property. Um, the recommendation is uh, we'd like to see some kind of um, manufacturing, logistics, or potentially a family destination. So the illustrations are, are purely just to, as thought provokers. Um, I'm not suggesting that this exact water park goes in that place. Um, the recommendation would be to have something that we could draw from neighboring communities, um, probably maybe as far as 20, 30 miles out. Um, mm -hmm. So there you obviously some, see some water parks. Um, point number two is the van Lizard, I always get it wrong. It's actually, it's actually been Velicigen with a V. Okay. This is, so I'll go back and we'll, we'll clean that up. But that property is to the west of the Lakewood development. And the recommendation there was to become a high end business park that extends um, right along I 90. And so this could really be a potential space to have bigger businesses, as well as possibly a potential college satellite location. Um, knowing that there's 90 access there, and with all the growth in the area, when you look at Huntley, Pingree, um, it's a recommendation here with a few examples of a higher end business park um, that I think we discussed last time. Any uh, any questions or concerns on that one? 
Uh, then we focus to the east. I think last time I mentioned it was west, um, the east corridor. This is where the Oakstead development is primarily. Um, there's point number one. This would be uh, right now it is currently zoned for community commercial. Um, we recommend we recommend that it stays the same. Um, so we uh, it is set back pretty far. So the recommendation would be to allow bigger businesses, not just strip malls. Um, point number two, this would be the induction of what introduction of what um, I name the center. This could be a town center concept. So you see a couple examples there of images where there's um, it's more of a center of business where everything time. Every building tends to have a theme, um, and it would be kind of the cross sections of where Al Allen's Corners exists. Um, one of the thinkings here is that most of the population to date tend to travel from west to east. So, as um, is it Prairie Ridge the development in the far west? It's the far west. Yeah. The far west. So as Prairie Ridge develops, um, we would imagine that that traffic and those consumers would travel east for business. So if this develops out, um, hopefully we can actually have capture a lot of that business there versus pushing them to Huntley. And then 3.3 3 there is kind of in the Allen's or the Starks Corner area. And this is right now, I believe, zone. Um, I'm not sure what purple is. I think it's um, business park. Um, so my recommendation is um, to allow for larger regional commercial. And this, some examples, obviously, Target, Starbucks. Per Payton Grove is going to be so large. And with the expansion of Hampshire, I think this might be an ideal cross section to try and marry both of those. Mm -hmm. So any questions on that? So kind of what we talked about last time and just kind of continue is this yeah. almost serves as a second downtown type of area, the center number two. Yeah, number yeah, two. As a second right. downtown area, which sort of gives those residents that are farther north instead of pushing them out to Huntley, gives them an opportunity to stay in Hampshire and shop. Right. And yeah. kind of interact and, and do good. And Jay, this is that's not too far from that property that the one family just purchased, correct? Right, just around the corner on uh, Briar Hill Road. You know, they they still planning on doing some kind of big to do over there. Is there anything we can share? I know you said you were kind of had some plans or things about uh, maybe a record, you know, massive recreational type thing as a possibility. Is, is there any further developments on that? Uh, yes, I, I don't recall what we discussed at the last board meeting, but there are actually three things going on over there. Um, their industrial recycling facility is still uh, planned, of course. Uh, that's 25,000 square feet on 18 acres, but in the surrounding area, they, they plan on, uh, we've talked before, I know about the um, the campgrounds that's going to be for high-end coaches, um, and then a wedding venue, sort of a tiny house uh, cabin type of wedding venue. And now just recently, we've introduced them to two other potential recreational um, developments. We have a gentleman who's interested in building an indoor and outdoor baseball a tournament facility, if you will, about 25,000 square feet indoors, and then several fields outside. Um, he he was recently at a at a tournament, and this is a this is a business he's been running. He just doesn't have a facility. He lives in Carpentersville, and he hasn't gotten much uh, interest from Carpentersville. So he's really, in fact, he talked now about moving his family to Hampshire because he's been so welcomed. Um, so uh, he they they uh, had a tournament recently in Florida where the just the the um, Registration fees for the teams was one point two million dollars. Um, so these tournaments bring in you know hundreds of players and teams and a lot of hotel stays. So that's one. Uh, the other one is um, one of our local businesses, and I, he would prefer to remain uh, unnamed at this point. He owns a business in Hampshire, and he's interested in putting up a uh, a big water slide. And uh, we initially showed him the Shireland property, and then he got interested in this property. So he he they have all now met uh, with the Berglund family, who is the family developing that property. So it seems like that could become sort of the recreational center of, of Hampshire if, if these things happen. 
which would mean that, that putting the center at number two would make a heck of a lot of sense because those people that are coming there are going to need uh, places to eat and shop. And correct, as someone who's been to dozens and dozens and dozens of baseball tournaments, we're about ten years late on this, by the way. Jay. <laughs> None of my kids are playing baseball that level anymore. But no, that's a fantastic, really cool place because I would imagine he would be. He could also double. It. I mean, hopefully, he's thinking outside of the box. It's indoor, outdoor, I mean, basketball as well as volleyball, as well as multi-use is really where you can sort of make that thing pay all year long. And, yeah. You know, yeah. parents of youth coaches are nuts on what they spend money on. So the yeah. That's one of the things that was really interesting because the Berglund family, they, they've investigated water slides for their own. They, they were talking about having a slide that would, that would empty into their lake uh, that's on their property. So they sort of, there was a very interesting meeting to listen to the, the two different families, both very family oriented companies, um, both talk about this recreational facility. Um, so that and to make it a little more serious, um, Mr. Berglund now has estimated the cost of extending water and sewer to his property, as well as uh, a major road that would go back into the property. So he's now looking at a $3 million investment in water and sewer rather than just digging uh, a well and, and having sump over there. So. Uh, they're uh, they're pretty serious about this. The number we, we help them with uh, the estimate of the of the engineering costs. It's about a little over three million dollars to bring water and sewer to that area. So they're talking about doing that through a um, a um, a recapture agreement. Hmm. Yeah, I think this just doubles down double downs um, the importance of a document like this. That as people are looking to bring business to Hampshire. It shares in the vision of what we see for the village as well. So um, someday I hope that Charter Land property develops to be something that can draw from around um, neighboring communities. But okay, your comment there. I've I've had uh, several conversations in the last few weeks with uh, Dan Light, who owns the Charter Land property. Um, he's kind of come out of hiding after all these years, and. Uh, uh, he also owns 165 acres behind Elgiloy. So he's now hired a, a broker to represent him on both of those properties. And uh, we actually have a prospect for the Shireland, the 90 acres at the Shireland property right now, a, a pretty large industrial prospect. Uh, okay. All right, good. And for that property too, I've always thought, just throwing this out there, I don't know if I've said it before, but a top golf facility there would be just <laughs> incredible. Just throwing that out there. I'm not saying I would like it, but I might. As well as a lot of other people. Great exposure up there. Okay, so as we look to the south, um, predominantly this is all Route 72 and mostly in the south side of the of Route 72. But the thought here is um, the high traffic volume that, that currently drives down 72, trying to take and capture some of that from the residents uh, within town and then south of town. So um, the recommendation would be that all furniture on Route 72 that is available consider a mixture of commercial businesses that require small to medium sized footprints. You know, this shot, um, this image here is more representative of something a little bit more upscale, but something a little bit different than a cookie cutter shirt model that I think we've seen from neighboring communities. Um, again, the way that it could differentiate Hampshire um you know in in scope and 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 what our brand is all about so it's kind of like the the business park area retail area if you take what is it burlington road till it almost ends at 64 38 oh let's go oh yeah it doesn't right. look like a typical strip mall. The buildings are a little nicer looking they're like art i don't want to say artisan but they're like individually owned shops there's yeah I mean, I think there's a McDonald's down the road, but other than that, it's not like your mass chain type. And thing. even the McDonald's fits that look and feel. Yeah. 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 Those businesses are going out of business. They're constantly looking for new owners in those businesses. Are they? And then yeah. Moscow's? Yeah. I think a lot of it, I have friends that live in that area, and um, I think COVID would have fared with damper. I think also um, the revitalization or enhancement of downtown St. Charles. Right. It's not far enough removed right. to where it competes directly with that. Or something like this out here 
I think we could probably draw from Angry out west, but then also everything in Genoa and could pull in from that. Um, because I want to say it's only a 10 minute drive from that Wasco area to downtown St. Charles. Mm -hmm. I make that track, but that, yeah, it's it's a rough, it's a rough. But even before COVID, because 10 minutes, there were shops. I don't know what. I, don't know, I was just going to say, even before COVID, those shops were in and out. It's like there was a dress shop, this shop, and then it went out of business, and then there was another store there, and then it went out of business, and it seemed to be hard to fill. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of homes. I think there one are. of the differences, too, with this, though, like I was thinking of the way the buildings look there. Mm -hmm. With the one off 72, we don't have that big of a square footprint, so all of the shops would be facing directly to 72 right. and visible from the road. Right. There, you get the back You're of right. a lot of stores, and you have to go into the parking lot to yep. see everything that's in there. Right. Right. So I think if, if, if the developer, whoever were to do this, is smart about mm -hmm. visibility from the road and signage, I think it could have do a we, good impact. Do we, as a, as a village, have the right to determine what it looks like going in. Like I know Elgin on Randall Road, they have a height limit for signage on up and down Randall Road. Do we as a village have any kind of uh, ability to have? We do. We have ordinances that can, that state things like signage and height. And I don't know that we have one of building look and feel, but I know communities have those like Asheville, right. North Carolina has right. a very strict ordinance on building look and feel right. for specific areas. So that would you would do that through ordinances. Right. I don't think there is one for building look and feel right now other than maintenance and upkeep. Right. Right. And most of the time, but I will say those ordinances usually get the biggest, the biggest number of ordinance exceptions. Bar I say very much granted variance, at least in my time on the board, we granted the variance almost every time. <laughs> um, on sign height, and that was mainly in the uh, most of the time, it was the truck So I think um, as long as a developer comes and share this vision to them, then hopefully the development and design style is in, in mind. This. Look at the Arboretum. If, even for an outdoor mall, all of those buildings in the Arboretum have a certain feel to them, totally different than out on the commons. Right. Yeah. right. It brings up a good point, Jay. I'm kind of hoping to draw you in on this one. Is um, does it make sense for us to put some of that stuff into ordinance? Because it's not there now. And typically, now, Joe. Uh, Lazar had shown us his plans originally, and he, I would say those plans conformed. And I don't know if you've seen those yet, Jay, but um, or Josh, but they, they conform. I think generally with a very nice aesthetic. It's built well. It's you know it's not the the most you know economically efficient building style, like maybe you might argue um, the other one on seventy two is perhaps. But um, I don't know. What do you think on that, Jay? Does that sound like something that? recommended to the board so that at least it gives people who come in at least obstacles to overcome or at least ask for variances about, you know, to give, uh, to guide some of that construction or do we think we just leave it to the uh, private uh, parties to do that? Well, well, first of all, we do have a, I think I heard somebody say the sign ordinance primarily applies to the truck stop, but the, we do have a sign ordinances that apply to the regular, to, to the rest of the village as well. Uh, just as the truck stop has its own uh, sign or sign uh, uh, regulations because it's so different. But yes, the, the villages, I would say that our, our uh, codes right now are, they're not restrictive. It, it's not, for example, like if you go over to Winnetka or Highland Park where they have, you know, you can't have a sign more than six feet high. So you see even McDonald's sign and the gas stations are all like under 10 feet high. Um, that's, that's pretty unusual, I think. But I would say that our, for the most part, um, the, the Planning and Zoning Commission and the Village Board both can can comment, staff can comment to the developers. Um, I have seen Joe Lazard's building, so I think for the most part, you know, we, for, for example, right now we're working with a company um, and Trustee Kelly, and I think, and thank you, Ryan, are aware as well, we're working with a company that wants to build apartments in Hampshire. And I think we've talked about this at the commission before. So one of the things we talked the most about is the look and feel of the apartments, uh, the exterior, uh, not just the density, uh, but also the look and feel. And uh, so that's 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 something that I think we have a, a lot of influence on. And I'm not sure that the code is really where that comes from. It's just that we, both the Planning and Zoning Commission and the Village Board, um, 
can, can make comments and encourage as well as staff developers to have a certain look and feel. And uh, I've, I've been very impressed with what we've seen from both this apartment. It's not just apartments, it's also commercial with the apartments and also um, a Joe Lazar. So I think to the extent we have good developers that come to town and we've had that good fortune that, um, that that's how you really control it. I've, I've really not seen, a, other than those communities on the, on the North Shore where they're really restrictive. And uh, even then I think that, I'm, I'm not sure that's Hampshire. So I, I guess I'm not sure exactly what you're, what you're referring to when you talk about specifics, but. Um, I was just talking about maybe like, for instance, in certain subdivisions, you know, you gotta have brick on the front, you gotta have, you know, you know certain amount of you know, types of peaks or whatever. I mean, there's, there's more restrictive building requirements. Yeah, the funds. Right. Right. Yeah, the, the frontage from the rail offset the road, how big is your, right. I mean, those kind of, you know, very specific things, which is kind of more what I was thinking to be more of a guide. Uh, guiding well, residential we go through the the development agreement process and there are monotony regulations and that sort of thing um for for all of our housing developments we have monotony re regulations so you'll see different variations of, of, of five or six different models in each subdivision um, but when you get to a, a commercial mall like that you're really it you're really depending on the the developer who you're working with and, and he also has a development agreement so now, there's plenty of opportunity for staff to reflect the, the opinions of the board, of uh, this board uh, commission, as well as the Planning and Zoning Commission and the Village Board. But I think there's, I think, I think we already do that. And and just recently, we've had several developers come before the Village Board, even before the legal process, just to make a presentation on the concept. That's something that we've encouraged uh, since I've been here, and I think that's been really good for the board then to have to see what the plans are and to make comments and ask questions. And uh, I feel like that's a pretty effective uh, way of handling it. All right. Um, the next part is focused purely on downtown. So uh, the Hampshire Town Center. So this is one where we uh, recommend extend the town center all the way north to Allen Road and carry the streetscape enhancement all the way down with it. Um, examples here are, of, I can't tell where the left one is, um, but the right one is East Sunday. I think their revitalization has been incredible. Um, so I think it's one example that's close that we can look to to say, wouldn't it be great for our downtown? Extend it all the way to Allen Road and look like that. Mm -hmm. no. um, so the recommendation here is, um, you know, it is something that's pedestrian friendly um, and it's really accessible to the workforces uh, in Hampshire and surrounding Hampshire. Thanks to that point, though, to what we were just discussing, and it's it's past the point of being able to do that for downtown now with the right. facade programs that have already been approved. But that would have been an area where I could see us having rules saying all of the front of the buildings must have a brick facade of three different types of color or you know what I mean so yeah. that because like when you go down East Dundee or you go down some of those they are very they have their own look and feel but they're very um similar in the materials that were used yeah. and it gives a cohesion of the space which I thought looks really nice I think the work that the businesses have done looks phenomenal it just as we're looking down further towards Allen and we have some of that new commercial going up, is that something to consider? Of how do you bring that cohesion all the way down so it doesn't look like brand new old? In I one totally space? Agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that would be my recommendation as well is that any commercial property that's developed on state has blends in to our current streetscape. Um, to the good, to the good ones. <laughs> Not to every single one. Um, we don't need a hodgepodge, but okay. Uh, so the overview um, simply summarizes all the points I walked through. Um, so it talks all throughout the village. And, you know, the one thing that every time I look and I always see is that we're really going to expand to the east and to the west. And most of the, everyone who lives in the west is going to travel east and everyone who's in the east will shop east um things that are there so i think number four 
uh, where that town center concept is, I think could be extremely vital to keeping business within Hampshire. Um, you know, entertainment district for it is where the town center downtown becomes. Um, but if you're going to do your everyday shopping and things like that, I think there could be a really good case to be made that Route 20, starting from Starks Corner all the way to the truck stop, could be that hub of what Huntley is now, because we're you know taking 47 all the way north. There's logistical issues trying to build properties you know throughout there, a uh, water and sewer, and you know some of the current farming properties that are there. I I think. You could easily shift traffic um, for those shopping in Pingree to be able to move up and come up 20 versus go all the way in the lane for shopping. I, I agree because I think, especially I would say now from 2 30 to like 6 30, I almost want to stay away from 47. Mm -hmm. right? So if those communities within Pingree have an alternative right. to go shopping rather than sitting in the traffic, especially as the new uh, distribution centers and right. businesses are That's built right. At, yeah. right off 90 there. Definitely. Yeah. Well, it's almost four years ago that we were really trying to avoid is becoming just a bedroom community. Right. And I think that's really the opportunity for us to sort of keep, keep you know, to give our people and keep business here. Um, I think that 20 stretch and I don't think it was really obvious to us three, four years ago. We thought it was going to be a big road. But I mean, as we kind of walk through this, I, I, I would tend to agree with you. That's I think that's a real opportunity um, for us to to add that space and be pretty critical. I think it's nice that we've got the home, you know, the, the landowner who's not that far from that who's looking to do some big things. Right. Um, I think hopefully that will draw some um yeah, some caution. No, that's not good. And then uh lastly just resurfacing uh with beautiful images. Um so biking and walking path. So you know I I still think um it would it would be great that knowing that most of the property to the east west and north have not been developed yet that as it, it does get built out um it is negotiated with the home builders that they put in some some kind of path that if we're able to get these paths installed throughout the communities um we could join them all into one massive you know loop section um the more people I talk to about this concept outside of our town, people I work with, um, I'm shocked at how many people have made purchasing decisions for homes because they're located near paths. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was shocked. Um, it, it tends to be a very, very big selling point because people like to be active yeah. and you just have to walk out your front door and you can be active, you know. Well, and to add that, I mean, someone's basically living on trails right now, you know, all the time. I mean, they're everywhere. And uh, the ones that are well-maintained are frequented by tons of people. In addition to that, as far as drawing people in our community, you can have charity walks. You can have all sorts of things like, you know, I was, you know, been doing, you know, drives along um, Lake Michigan lately. Um, but then also I've gone through, you know, uh, Wheaton and, in Winfield and all that, and you know, all that you've got all sorts of tables and opportunities for community members to interact with each other, join groups that do, you know, work out together or yes. um, or do charity walks, and that's again another draw into our community, which will help you know all the local businesses and things like that. Just, yeah, I mean, I think you, it's a great idea. If you think people in Oakstead and Prairie Ridge and Lakewood, without traveling major roads, could jump on a bike as a family and be able to go to downtown and experience of it. I mean that that makes Hampshire special, right? That that is something that I can't think of any other neighborhood in the area that has something like that. The only thing I can go to St. Charles. And, that, and that's whatever that name that the Fox River the Fox River trail. And it just it goes through through a slice. Yeah, yeah, and it just goes through it. Yeah. 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 Kids could, you know, East and 
East Indy has the path go right through. And every Saturday, they've got a swap mark, a swap meet. East Indy is probably the one that goes through. But navigating, being able to say, if any any one of my kids' friends lived in any one of these communities being built, they could travel to without jumping on a major road yeah. and just take a bike path. Yep. That's well, even on the ones that just cut through, like Dundee, if you go through on a Saturday morning, there's so many bikes yeah. at the different businesses yep. from people that are just riding through and they stop and grab Dairy Queen or whatever it is they're having and it's so hacked. Yeah. Cool. And then the events that we have in downtown, right? You're, right. you know, now it alleviates some of your parking problems. You know, obviously you want to put up, you know, bike racks and things of that nature so people can store their bikes safely and they can mill them out, but that allows you to draw more of your community into your downtown events, whether it's the street dance, it's the, you know, um, whatever other things that I think the yeah. chamber plans on doing down there. Yeah, it's another way to get them, you know, there without having to jump in the car. Yeah. So I'm a huge fan of this idea. Yeah. yeah. And so then the last one was the French Road connection uh, we talked about last time, the bypass uh, to the west of State Street. So just a recommendation um, that as we're trying to make traffic flow a little bit better, um, just overall recommendation. So I did take liberties putting together a PowerPoint template for the village. So hopefully I didn't bastardize the uh, the brand. Um, so um, feel free to uh, rip it apart, use it, share it. Um, but that uh, that's it. So um, any recommendations? Any further changes? Yeah, any, any any input from the group, positive or negative? I think it looks fabulous. It's very exciting. It's a job very well done. And I I think that bike path is is uh, is really exciting, all of it. It's very cohesive, but it's very diverse. Um, it really covers every aspect of a community. So great job. Oh, thanks. All right, so uh, next steps we get with zoning and well, I think that's kind of Jay, you kind of put us on this mission back about four months ago. Um, did we hit the target? Yes, what are your thoughts on this and what more do you want from us or to Dave's point, what is what would be the next steps you think? Uh, yes, absolutely. I think you hit the target. I agree with everything Karen said. I, I do want to just add that in, in all of our active um, building uh, residential developments, there are, are paths being built. In fact, there's a, a pretty nice path, a path to nowhere really right now in Prairie Ridge, um, but there will be path all the way north, south through Oakstead, which will go all the way from Big Timber down to uh, Route 20. Um, so I think, I think it, the challenge will be connecting those paths. Uh, you know, crossing, the, there's paths in front of the school, for example. Um, so the path, I think that'll come together. We just have to look at, at how to connect the neighborhoods. Um, but to the bigger picture, yes, I do think that the next step would be to um, either have a joint meeting with uh, the Planning Commission or um, Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, probably be a good idea to start with um, Brian Morak, the chairman, and share some of this information with him. Uh, you can invite him to maybe one of your meetings or I think maybe we I can communicate with Brian and see how he'd like to handle that. The Planning and Zoning Commission actually has a formal role to play in the in the comprehensive plan, and uh, uh, not a not really a dictating role, but a formal role to play to recommend to the village board. And uh, as I mentioned a while back, the cost to update the comprehensive plan. We actually have a quote from PRI, the landscape architects that did our streetscape. They also did our, our current. Um, comprehensive plan. It's about $30,000 to update all the maps and everything that, that goes into that. So we do not have that in the budget this year. Um, but but that's the next step, I would say, to go to the Planning and Zoning Commission and get their buy-in. And then there's a lot we can do as staff working with both of, both commissions uh, to get the, you know, the, the um, creative and, and policy making work done so that then they can document it in a formal plan. <clears throat> All right, good. Awesome. Thank you, Dave. That yeah. was uh, excellent. Yeah, very good. Um, okay, moving on uh, to item number five is the brochure discussion. Um, so I think uh, the conversation that we had last time was included in the minutes was that uh, we're sort of taking a, um, 
a pause on this um, and uh, we're going to kick it back into this group um, and we're kind of waiting for funding, Jay. That, that was the last, I remember that was in the notes from me last time. We're sort of waiting for more funding to go instead of moving from Shaw Media going to A5 and to sort of uh, get working with them and then having us do that work. Is that still what you want? Uh, yes, I think that's where the commission's headed and I agree. Um, I have, have a proposal from uh, A5 I'm looking at right now. I think I've sent it to you, all of you before, but it's uh, $4,000 for them to basically start from scratch. Uh, there's there's really not much usable from the Shaw Media uh, files. It's, it's just, uh, you know, the pictures aren't what the commission wants at this point. The maps are not what the commission wants. Um, and uh, and th there was some discussion about the text also. So I think that the, the last time we talked, it was not just funding, but also there was discussion about waiting until Streetscape was finished. Uh, so we could have some good pictures of streetscape. And uh, so in my mind, uh, unless the commission feels a different way now, uh, we're probably talking about waiting until next spring sometime uh, after, well, probably later than that, probably summer when when uh, we have a new budget, first of all, and then when we have streetscape completed. But I, I would definitely want you to go on record now as to whether that's still your thoughts. If it's just the money, it's just $4,000, or is it also waiting for streetscape? I mean, what, from then or from now until then, personally, I don't feel like we're missing anything by not having it. Yeah. Really? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. If we're going to do it, let's do it right. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I don't agree. It's just, it's one of those things that just in, you know, my career or if anything is it just, that it just it keeps lingering, you know. And we don't uh, talk about this since I first. Oh, my this is like one of the first issues we took up in seventeen in uh, May of seventeen. But I think that there definitely is benefit for waiting. You know, I know we do live in a digital world, you know, where we've got websites and we've got things of that nature that sort of, and we also have a village manager and a bill assistant to the village manager, and you know, a lot of the pieces that we didn't have when we originally sort of took on this brochure. That we're sort of looking to sort of fill some of that gap. So, so can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Yeah. Because we live in a digital world, is there someone I don't know? I'm not on the village board or that active to know. Is that website being improved and adjusted and made it so that if people are from Hampshire, they can go there and see everything that they would see in the Are you speaking of the village website? Yes. Yeah. I, I personally, I feel like it's come a long way. Um, Josh has had a lot to do with that. We've we've been just some. We've made it more practical. I think, of course, we have a real expert in the room with with um, a trustee Kelly. Um, but but I think our website is very functional. We we try to make it more and more functional. Uh, we've done just in the last few days. Just we've updated some of the forms for residents to fill out. Uh, we're we're responding to the social media. You know, right now there's a lot of talk on the PR committee about social media and communicating through social media. And so instead of just, you know, taking screenshots of comments people are making, we now have a form that we're going to be posting on Facebook or on all social media saying, here's a form if you have suggestions or or a resident inquiry. And uh, Josh just finished that form uh, late last week. So, I mean, that's all for you to, to really judge for us, but I feel like we, we have a lot of information on our website. Um, We've created special pages for for projects like the Oakstead subdivision. Um, so I feel like I feel like it's very functional. Um, my personally, I'm not saying it's not functional. I think there's lots of information on there and it is much better than it used to be. I guess what I was looking at instead of a brochure, could there be a section of the website that has those kind of pictures and shows the areas that are buildable, you know, making that almost like a brochure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Susie, let me just speak to that real quick because I was looking at it today. We actually have an economic development page and on that page we list available properties and that that area needs to be updated. I don't I'm not sure I've ever seen that part of it before. I was digging pretty deep into the website today, um, but there is an economic development page and it does list available sites. And uh, I think the only the, the, the uh, Berklow Shopping Center is on there because they had some vacancies and there's a couple pieces. Of, I think there's only three properties on there. But there's definitely a place to do that, Susie. It was a one time we tried looping in. Mm -hmm. LoopNet, I think, has a widget that you can install in the site and it always is updated. But 
never had a lot of luck with that. Yeah, I think there there is some opportunity for improvement on the content on there as far as the why Hampshire. I think the what is answered very well right. there. Like, what do we have for places of worship, education, the businesses, government? You know, all of that stuff is on there. The why live in Hampshire, the that that marketing piece to it, maybe we could have a little bit more. We should have a digital version of the brochure on there, definitely, but like here's the e version that you can download because yeah. not everybody wants a print. Mm -hmm. I do think we'll still need a print for some of the outbound marketing to developers to say, hey, we may have some interest, or a developer comes in and says, Do you have something I can send to prospective clients to rent out that are looking for retail space, right? Mm -hmm. The um The rebrand, I think, has helped a lot. There, there is um, also in the PR committee a motion, or not motion, but an initiative to bring together all of the local community organizations from Lions to the schools to the village, township, library, everybody to create a comprehensive community calendar of events to be on the website mm -hmm. so that businesses, residents, anybody can see what happen like what's going on in Hampshire so if it's on a Saturday the chamber is doing the market the, mm -hmm. right. the library has a kids reading program the school has a fundraiser you know all the different things so you can see that where you may not think there's a lot going in on in Hampshire once you talk to all these organizations there's actually a ton of stuff for families and yep. businesses and people to do especially if we're trying to get businesses in and then employees like hey is there stuff in the evening after work that we can go to or hey they're doing a concert in the street on a friday night coming up in two weeks let's let's see about getting some of our team there or whatever it may be right yeah. okay. so we're, we're meeting tomorrow and that's on the agenda as well to continue that conversation of having a at least a i think it's a quarterly or potentially monthly meeting of representatives from every one of those that works to get together to say okay what do you have coming up? Let's make sure it's on that group calendar. I think part of it is trying to figure out the right technology to have it on there. But have you seen East Dundee's website? I have not gone to it. Is it? It's really good. And it has exactly what you're saying, a calendar. You can click on the calendar. I mean, everything is just, and it's big and visual, but easy. So check it out. Okay. It's really good, I think. Yeah, the only thing I would recommend to everyone in this room is as buildings going on from now until summer, um, just keep a list of shots we might want to get. No, if they're if they're breaking ground somewhere. Oh, pictures. Or pictures. Sorry. I'm shots. No, 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 <laughs> no. Yeah, pictures. Um, that if you know. The, yeah. the season's right, the breaking ground, you see massive development, like at Oakstead, they start clearing property, right? You get a great shot of just, you know, development happening on mm -hmm. at scale. Um, you know, things like that, I think are always good to add. But, okay. All right, so as far as the brochure goes, so we're gonna hold off until Streetscape is completed. So then, push that off um but that kind of leads me into a question that uh, we were waiting for the brochure to take the next step in one of our other programs that we were looking at putting into place which is the uh the ambassador program um which karen and Jeannie uh, have been working on and i think we had sort of made some progress through uh april uh may and uh, maybe even june but then we had agreed that maybe pause until we got the brochure because the brochure was at least felt imminent um and uh but now that it's not imminent i kind of you know what do we think there karen what are some of your thoughts in terms of that and, and just real quick ian i'm not sure if you're aware of your camera we're looking it's, at your keyboard <laughs> and your thumb every once in a while yeah so i'm just just letting you know that in case you can stop. <laughs> well, since I looked at it a few times trying to figure out. So anyways, Karen, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think we should move forward without the brochure then? I've been thinking about that and I I my instinct is saying I don't think we should because it wasn't really just the brochure, it was also the momentum of the streetscape and just kind of the momentum of, you know, there's a lot of changes going on. Um, it's an exciting time. 
And if, if we're putting some of that on hold right now, I I wonder if we should put the this this ambassador program on hold right now, unless you know, and unless we start having these because my thought was, what if we start having these conversations with some of these business owners, and you know, do we want them to kind of be in? It's one thing if you're already in process and you're making these improvements. It's another if you're like, well, we're going to do this, and then suddenly you start getting a lot of chefs in the kitchen, or maybe a lot of either welcome or unnecessary input. I don't know if we'd be opening up a box that maybe we don't need to be opening up right now. I'm not sure if I'm communicating this thought very well, but um, I'm wondering if maybe it's best to just hold off at the moment until we kind of get that momentum picking back up again. I'm just afraid it might, we might be represented not in the way we want to be if things are a little stagnant at the moment. Does that make sense? I agree with you, Karen. Yeah. Let me offer an alternative thought to that is the goal. What is the goal of the ambassador program? Let's kind of think about that real quick. I mean, this is something that we've talked about. We just call it business, business consortium. We sort of tied to the um, presentation that we did at Resource Bank. It's really about just us building a communication uh, channel to existing businesses here in town for the long term goal of creating ambassadors for the village of Hampshire to sort of communicate our message when we're looking to sort of connect other people. And then also, you know, to let the business members uh, here in town understand that, um, you know, we're open to their input, they're open to their ideas. Um, and then we also want to share with them the plans of doing. Um, I, I guess my pushback was I'm not so sure that's necessarily tied to streetscape unless other people see it from a different perspective. When we think about the actual spirit of what that program is, is really geared at. So I'm open to hearing other people's thoughts on that, but I think, um, yeah. I guess if I were, well, I am a business owner, but if, if somebody was a, to approach me, I would be, as Karen just said, when you say this is gonna happen and it was supposed to happen this summer and now it's not happening this summer and it just creates some doubt, I think, in a person's head. Unfortunately, I think that's just the way I would respond. What are your thoughts on that, Ian? You've been with us quite a while. I think you're on mute, my friend. Sorry, multitasking, dealing with things. <laughs> yeah, I, I see both sides, um, but I do agree. If you keep kicking it down the, the the can, kicking the can down the street, now brochure is nice to have, but brochure is kind of passe, and for the most part, we have brochures, but our brochures are kind of customized to our for our customers so in other words if if you are a in the healthcare business you don't want to see me with my warehouse business brochures and if i was sending something to karen she's not going to think i do very well if i send her all my schools yeah i'm a good school builder but what can you do for where for industrial so it becomes the same thing too as if you get the brochure done and sure the streetscape's nice but it's only gonna be one picture in the brochure so it's it's nice to have it, and then I but I do agree with what Jay is saying too. Is it, you, and and what uh, Susie was asking for is, it should be on the website because as much as much as the days of old, I remember getting all these marketing pieces and enjoying reading them. Nowadays, just like everybody else, so the hit 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 Google and just find out what I'm looking for, and it pops up. So if somebody's wanting to go to Hampshire, they're going to want to pop up and see, you know, what is it the Hampshire can offer me, and that, there's your brochure right there. They're gonna go. They're gonna go to that first more than if you had something to send out. Having something being sent out that you could give to somebody that when somebody pops by and 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 goes in to see Jay, Jay to Jay is gonna say, here he can pass, give him something, but something that could probably be just printed out by staff and with some good paper and a, and a halfway decent color printer. That's what we do. My, my husband and I went to Chili's for lunch today, and they don't have menus anymore. They give right. you a thing to scan so that you can look at it on your phone. Yep. 
Did you like it? No, I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so we, Come on, Susie, that's off school. Get new school. <laughs> you show my game is one. Can I recommend an option? Yeah. Um, what do you think? What if we were to send a, a BBC ambassador to the chamber meetings that's a and idea. build relationships before until this this document is created? And then this way, we're not as foreign when we have outreach, right? The relationships are already built over six months, eight months. And then this way, when we ask outreach, the scope could change. If we all, if, you know, a group of us here and there are able to sit in and listen to the chamber. It's it might be a good way for us to maybe we start unpacking like the the real need is not here. The real need might be somewhere else that we're not even thinking of. And, and I think that's kind of the idea of driving this program is in getting sort of building connections. The old, I, I think that's a nice idea. My concern is I've been to the chamber meetings before. A lot of it is home-based businesses. I mean, that's a, a, a big, significant portion of the chamber. A membership is realtors, um, you know, uh, serve pro things that are more. Yeah, which is fine, and we do need to build connections with them. But some of our anchor type, man, I, I don't know. Do you does uh, Stanley regularly attend the chamber meetings? Karen, do you guys send someone? No. Not in the Um and so, I, well, I think that's a great idea. Um, I think it's clear where I, what I think uh, in voicing my opinion. I would like to get this program moving forward as opposed uh, the brochure was an interesting way of sort of packaging it with the letter that Karen and Jeannie had created that I thought was kind of interesting. But absent the, the brochure, I think we it would be my opinion that we, we still try to can make those connections that, you know, to businesses maybe that don't go to charities. So let's rethink the ambassador program. Since we don't have a brochure, we're not going to be using a brochure and focusing on a brochure. What would the ambassador program now be? Maybe I misunderstood the program because what I thought the program was supposed to be in, and being newer to the discussions, I thought the program was designed or going to be designed around a business reaches out to Jay at Village Hall, they're interested in opening or doing manufacturing or distribution like on the I-20 or on the 20 corridor there, or whatever it may be, that he would then know that here's a list of C-level business owners or, or presidents of organizations or, or business professionals that he could say, you know, if you really want to know what it's like to do business in Hampshire, Here's somebody who's raised their hand that they're willing to have a conversation with you. Let me give you their information and, and connect the two of you to have a have a conversation with the village being out of it. Right. I thought that was a little bit of what it was, but I may be way out in left field because it sounds like it wasn't completely that. It was more of like the advocate. So as we marketed out, they would also help to support the word or a, a note from them to say, hey, this is a great place, but it yeah. was more of a generalized conversation maybe that's two different programs right no i think it's all part and parcel to the same thing yeah. um the idea is to build a synergy amongst uh the village um this board in some respect as well as um some of our you know key business uh owners general managers that are in 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 town here um for both a one-way, a two-way back and forth communication. But I think fundamentally, one of the key things that was brought up was to have the opportunity to uh, enlist them in helping us try to communicate to prospective you know, business owners that, hey, Hampshire's a really great place to do business. Um, and um, so, yeah, I, I definitely think that's part of it for sure. Um, so. Go ahead, Karen. Go ahead, Karen. Well, and to that point, Ryan, I think it's, you know, it's, so after hearing what everyone's been saying, a couple thoughts. So I, I think that the the main goal was initial, you know, overall, like our mission is right to retain and develop to retain business and develop new business. And so I think uh, the initial the use of the brochure was really sort of like a little icebreaker. It was mm -hmm. it was more of a tool to say, hey, you know, we're reaching out. We've got this new brochure. We've got this streetscape thing going just to kind of get the conversation started rather than just walking in and saying, hi, we're the Business Development Commission. It was 
it was a nice little tool to have, a nice little show and tell, um, a little bit of an icebreaker. And we can certainly move forward without it. And I definitely see both sides. Um, and I, I really like Dave's idea of utilizing the chamber or maybe another type of gathering and, and make it a two pronged process. Because to your point, Ryan, you know, not everybody is going to go to those chamber events, but it does serve a purpose in maybe reaching a certain market without having to send numerous individual letters to a lot of the smaller businesses. Maybe we reach that demographic by way of like a chamber meeting and then we have our pointed list maybe some of the larger anchor people as as you called it ryan or you know some of the bigger manufacturing or um or or uh, retail or whatever other types of larger industries that are in the area on a more one-on-one -on -one basis just kind of knowing that they're not probably going to to utilize some of these more like gathering networking type um programs and and i think we just go with the initial thought of using this as an introduction as to, you know, we are uh, the Business Development Commission. I don't even know if some people know we exist. I mean, I don't think anyone in Stanley Machining, frankly, has gone on Hampshire's website, no offense, but um, it's just not where their head is. That's, you know, that's what I'm here for, right? So, or people have other people to do. And so maybe just by way of an introduction saying, you know, we have this resource here, we're here to get your feedback. Um, we want people to stay and people stay when exciting things are happening, right? So we do kind of touch on some exciting things that are going on, the, you know, that are that are going down the road. And oh, by the way, you know, we are this whole idea of this of, of the expansion and, and the and the plan commission and the, and the um, you know, all this new business potential that we have coming up, you know, Maybe someone's looking to expand. Maybe someone knows someone who's looking to, you know, to bring a business in. It's all it's all about networking, right? At the end of the day, and so I'm all for moving the 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 needle on this and 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 keeping it going and and just shifting our, you know, adjusting our sales a little bit and getting with Jeannie and and maybe doing like what what Dave was saying a a, a chamber um, networking area there and then you know, kind of breaking apart some of our other businesses and doing a more targeted letter approach followed by a phone call. It'd be interesting to see if other chambers or larger chambers have like, I'm thinking though, what we do with some of our executive customers is like executive roundtables where you have the main organization, but then you have like a, mm -hmm. um, a focused group yes. of, mm -hmm. of like invite only executives that are brought together to network to your point, Karen, that may not be attending every chamber meeting, but it's still mm -hmm. maybe facilitated by the chamber and it's and it's meant for executives at local businesses, not necessarily to your point, the larger chamber members. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and I think that's what the vision really honestly is that that's the vision is where I, I think when we started talking about this three years ago is at some point, maybe having a meeting like that. And I know we talked about we kicked around quarterly or something. We don't know what the answer to that question is, but building a bridge where by you know major stakeholders in the community, you know, not very often can uh, can come together, express their views, express, you know, um, hear the new information that's coming along and sort of be connected to us. So, um, so is the goal of the ambassador program to build cohesiveness among the businesses that are already here? and let them know that we exist and we're there to support them? What What's the, the goal? Brian, can I interject quickly? Yeah, of course. Um, I know you can't see me. Um, Ian and Karen can see me, but you guys can't. <laughs> um, I, I think uh, Trustee Kelly just hit on it when he said business roundtable um, and also ambassador program. They kind of mean the same thing to me. Over the course of the last 30 days, I've had reasons to contact the CEO of WR Meadows, of Elgiloy, and two other companies. And uh, they've been very, first of all, the, the, the CEO of Elgiloy lives in Pennsylvania. He manages like 10 facilities. He's, he has an office in Hampshire, but he's only here three or four days a month. Um, but they happen to have some land uh, that another developer would like to access to get um, to Route 20. So I've, I've talked to three of the CEOs just in the last week. They're, they're very, you know, they're not interested in, in networking let me put it that way i think yeah. them to feel for them to feel you know they they have their networking in their industry they're networking in the professional associations and they're really busy um but but they are interested interested in knowing that the village cares about them 
Um, we've seen, you know, headquarters build additional headquarters in, in Hampshire just in the last few years. So for them to know that we care about them, that's important. Uh, I've been sending those names to you, Karen. I sent you a couple in the last few weeks. You've seen those, I think. Um, but I found them to be very interested in the village, not, not so much to participate in regular events, but one of them in particular, I asked him, we have a, a really interesting prospect coming from California, an industrial company. And uh, I asked him if he'd be willing to have lunch with them when they come to town. He was, he, this is the guy from Pennsylvania, from Elgiloy, and he was more than willing to do that. So I think maybe it's just a matter of time or reasons that I've had to call these people. But I think if we could just get 15 or 20 of the of the bigger manufacturing slash warehousing, mostly manufacturing, we and we have that many in, in Hampshire. I think that, uh, Susie, I think this is different than just, just the business owners. I think we're talking about the major businesses in town now, the mm -hmm. Buckhead Beefs and everybody in the Northern Industrial Park and the Stanley Machinings and those type of companies. That's the group, the manufacturer. And frankly, a lot of them are buying from each other. They know each other. Um, so that that's the way I see this group. And if if they were to, if we were to get three or four of them together once a year, that would, in my mind, that would be a big thing. Yeah. And so they, in my mind, that the, the way we could use them is when we have prospects coming in, we could have them host a lunch or have two or three businesses say, yeah, we're, we're, our companies are here, our headquarters are here. I'm as the CEO, I'm here frequently, and Hampshire's a great place to do business. Uh, but then also for them to feel like we care about them and but that we're not nagging at them to come to lunch, you know, three times a year. Exactly. So in my yeah. mind, just to have a list of the CEOs of the top 15 or 20 people and have have them uh, maybe maybe participate in a in a um, some type of event. Maybe maybe the uh, um, the Business Development Commission hosts uh, an annual lunch for CEOs, an annual roundtable. We're not really there to network. We're, we're not really there to do anything except say we, we really appreciate you having your business in our town and we're going to buy you lunch and listen to you can listen to us talk for 10 minutes and then go about your business. And if we need you, we'll call you. And if you need us, call us. And I think also, Jay, to expand on that, I'm, I'm sure it's not knowing that 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 we care about them and, and giving them an outlet to say, you know, do you, do you have anything you want to share? Do you have any concerns or do you have any? ideas because um, I think them knowing that there's someone that they can talk to in the event that they did want to share any type of information or concerns, whether they decide to do that or not, just knowing that that communication is open would mean a lot. And one more thing I wanted to add that I just happen to think of, they really love to show their facilities. Um, and, uh, and all three of the ones that I talked to in the last 10 days have invited me up to come and take a tour. And I think they would love to have an open house, for example, and have the Business Development Commission come take a tour of their facility. That's the kind of time they would commit to. Um, you know, maybe they're putting in a new a new uh, a product line or a new production line, and they could show that off, or a new product line. And uh, so I, I think there's a way to get them engaged um, that that's, meets their needs, not necessarily um, just consumes their time. Jay, maybe this is something that, you know, you and I can talk about more in depth. You have a lot of one on one, you know, connections with a lot of these owners. And, um, and and maybe if, you know, depending on what you guys think, it would be nice to do a bit of a two prong and work with you on those key, you know, couple dozen people and then and then still kind of represent the commission at chamber events for you know, the other types of businesses that are maybe a little bit smaller or, um, you know, with, within the different industries. I, I mean, I'm certainly willing to go to those. It doesn't uh, it doesn't take much. And it's nice just to get our name out there. Um, and that way we're, I think, well represented initially. I think that'd be great, Karen. In fact, I, I would like to uh, when I when I go to El Deloitte in a couple of weeks, we have a, a reason to meet with them for business purposes for this land I just mentioned, but they also just want to give us a tour. So I'd be happy to invite you along. I think that'd be a great opportunity for you to meet the CEO of El Geloy. Uh, maybe they can sell you something, sell your brother something. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, and I, I'm gonna, they've invited um, Mike Reed and I to go up there just to take a tour. And uh, I think you could come along, Karen, that'd be a good opportunity for us to kind of test this idea out and kind of see where it heads. That's a great idea. If that's okay with the rest of the commission. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. I, I'm hearing that we're going to pivot on the current uh, ambassador program. 
Is that right? That's the way I understand it. It's just mm -hmm. shifting. Yeah. yeah, it's not. It's not. I was hearing it more of an and. That when the streetscape happens and we do the brochure, that that still is a motion. It sounds like that the commission wants to go forward with, but this is an additional type of motion that could could help expand what that ambassador program could encompass. Okay. Yeah, okay. just I don't maybe. really think these people care much about streetscape. I mean, they're they're busy running their companies and uh, going about their business, and they rarely come downtown uh, unless they happen to be with Stanley Machining or one of the companies that is downtown. Um, but they're, you know, they're they're kind of disconnected from from the community and the town. Really, they do their business and go home, whether home is Pennsylvania or or Barrington. Um, so uh, I think I think th this has always been kind of the concept I've been leaning towards from the beginning, is that we use them as a resource when we're recruiting, like businesses coming to town, and we just keep them connected. So when they, so when. Uh, you know, Timbuktu, Michigan calls them and says, hey, move your company here. They have a reason not to. And maybe the ambassador program dovetails, it's that. But then maybe it's better use of our time of having an annual meeting somewhere like we did at the bank. Yeah. Where we engage everyone in the town yeah. to say, come listen what, what's going on what's going over on? the next 12 months. Right. What our goals are, you know, yeah. speak of mind. Because I want to say that meeting alone was so positive. Yeah, and that was open to everybody, right? Okay. Ish, right? Well, that that was invite. Okay. It's not invite only, but it was a broader. It was, it was a broader set of stakeholders, right? It was, right? It was yes. It was a part of district. It wasn't just businesses. Yes. Anybody that. It was yep. part of him. Yeah, gosh. Oh, okay. But so, so to the answer, I think that, you know, we're still on track with the master program. Fundamentally, I think it's a different concept that we're trying Same to Same concept, just done differently. Just maybe done with some different sort of approaches, which I think is, you know, however we get there, is it, you know, it's the you know, best path, you know, um, that's why we get together and collaborate. Um, but uh, but no, I think that's great. Um, awesome. Okay. Any other comments on that? I'm glad we dropped that off. Thank you, Karen, for your work there. Um, any other thoughts? I mean, that wasn't technically on the agenda, but I did want to bring that up relative to the uh, brochure. So, okay, good. We're on the same page as far as that goes. Um, Bill Swalwell contacted me um, before the, the meeting, um, had said that he apologized, but he wasn't obviously able to make it tonight. His group has not met since we last met. Um, however, we did pass, well, I said, we, Aaron, I suppose, uh, give, give an opportunity. Um, but the village board, you want to share what the village board did on the three applications that came out of our board? Yeah, all three passed. Um, there was only, they all were unanimous except for one. Um, and I probably didn't vote the right way in that one. Uh, <laughs> I, so I appreciate your consistency. I really yeah, don't I want to do it. apologize because I think that what my role in that could have been is representing the BDC's recommendation rather than how I voted in that BDC recommendation. And I'm not sure, Chairman mm -hmm. Kajeki, how you approached it when you did both. But yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, that, that's, a, that's a choice that, yeah, you, you can make for yourself. I think um, as long as you represent, you know, our recommendations or whatever, but then I think you're free to sort of make whatever yeah. decision you and have, I think it's by the construct of the. Yes, yeah, so they were, they were unanimous. I th and I think it was absolutely unanimous from the board that all three projects were great. And, and should we have had more funding, I think they would have funded it, the last project more. It wasn't even a question of leave the rest of the funds. Um, one comment that did come up from one of the trustees, and I think it was a valid comment, is having a more solidified definition of what is and is not acceptable in the facade grant program and the application itself. Uh, what type, what are the projects that meet the qualifications, what don't meet the qualifications? Some of the examples given were when you think about what the facade means, you think the front of a the front look and feel of a building. But there have been projects where we have um, approved, or we being the village, has approved structural changes that will never be seen, right? Or, um, you know, other parts of construction that really aren't about the front look and feel and cohesion. And so there was no feeling that those were negative aspects. They were needed. 
the feeling was there should be stronger guidance to provide around what is and is not a part of the facade program because it was just the comment was it was felt it may be a little bit left up too left up to interpretation. Um, and that was the feedback from one of the trustees. Okay. Yep. Susie, you were there. Very valid point. And I, I see where he was coming from. So perhaps that's something on our next agenda. We could look over our facade program. We could. And, and look at the specifics of how it's written. And, yeah. that's exactly what it's. and I think we had that discussion when we started going down to Washington. Yeah, you, you, had that, you had that very discussion about a year ago. It might be time to revisit it. Um, but I think the board has, or the commission has, uh, Trustee Kelly, I think they have rewritten the program actually uh, since since Josh and I've been here with, with more clear guidelines. It's yeah, just, I'm playing the feedback. No, it's good. It's good. It's good. It, that, you're right, Jay. Um, this was a little bit deja vu, and I was like, I'm not sure if we did, but, Jay, but Josh, you yeah. added language, right? Yeah. I did. Um, yeah, did pretty, the fact it's online, I was just looking at it right here. There's maybe 15 maybe bullet points that list exact things that are permitted in the program. And then there's just a little caveat down there that says other improvements that are visible from a public right of way and have a positive impact on the appearance of the building may also be considered. And then the whole caveat is that this is not an ordinance, it's not law, so the village board can do whatever it wants. So that's just how how willing is the village board to stick to its own guidelines and the guidelines from this commission. Yeah, but I think it's good. This group is a lot through it. Yeah, and I, I will say what I what I did appreciate. I, I mean, I appreciate a lot of the discussion that we had that night. Also, all of it except for the way that that my vote ended up going. Um, but the the intent of the program, I think, is because we do have half of a new board, right, that just came on in May, and so this was the first time that I think, well, the second time we had one vote earlier, but the the first time that the board was looked at multiple applications, debating mm -hmm. funding for one versus another, knowing that we approve based in order of application received, that does affect whether somebody gets max funding or not. So there was some good discussion on that. Um, but I will say it was it was great to see that the board seemed very passionate about the program itself, about helping out local business and, and uh, property owners improve their businesses and the desire to continue something like that. So that was good. I, I, yeah, I mean, pretty soon I hope the goal is that there are no more businesses right. for grant money to go to because everybody's been awarded and helped, exactly. right, to right. improve the facility. So, yeah, exactly. But I think overall, did I miss? Did I excuse me? Yeah. No, did please. I misinterpret? But I kind of got a feeling that from the board that in the coming year money's going to be tight for our. So I don't know if it was for that program in particular. Okay. The budget itself will be very tight for one specific reason. This year we had in the budget a very large increase in the police pension fund because of the way the state changed how municipalities have to do police pensions. They took it out of our IMRF, moved it to a different, uh, and then that changed how the village was funded. And so there's a lot of catch up the village has to do. Um, they also changed tiers of officers. So officers that were originally at a tier two, which was a little different pension payoff, got bumped to tier one, which was a higher liability. Because of that, our liability went to like 300,000 this year. The concern of next year's budget is that jumps to over 600,000 next year in one budget year. And so that's an additional 300,000 in spend that the board is already trying to think about. Uh, how do we accommodate that? Because that's a legal liability we have. Right. Absolutely. And so does that mean optional programs have to be reevaluated or does it mean we have to try to go to a referendum or right. how do we start how do we still run the village and meet that all? Get more businesses so we have a bigger tax base. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I think that's what that call okay, was. Okay, thank about. you. That it helps. wasn't about that program. Okay. The thank one that, Jay, would you agree with that? Yeah, I think you you handled that covered that very well. The other factor that is still unknown is we may see something about the census tomorrow, but we normally see it in March. Uh, no real good good reason why. Uh, we're not seeing census numbers, but we've already lost three months of increased revenue for both motor fuel tax and income taxes from the state. So those dollars are staying with the communities whose populations are shrinking because they're getting their share of the 
the local government distributive fund, they're getting their share when their population, let's say the city of Chicago is probably going to lose, you know, a couple hundred thousand people and we're going to gain 200,000 people. Uh, they're continuing to get their revenue for three additional months, maybe even longer this rep this year. Um, so it's really frustrating. What I'm not sure that any other level of government is functioning other than local right now, to be honest. But yeah, that's a factor also. So yes, and we will be presenting to the board in September and October some budget up, some revenue updates um, to, to give you some ideas. But yeah, our general fund right now is is in jeopardy because of police pensions and also because of um, temporarily delays in uh, the census. That will eventually right itself, and the village will increase. We think by two to. 22,000, 2,500 population, which should give us a pretty good bump. And by the way, we counted on that in our budget. So the fact that we're three months late now is, is going to be a bit of a problem. Thank one you. Thing, one thing regarding the uh, program. So if we award a property for a modest improvement and the property is sold and somebody comes in and wants to really get after it and enhance the property, in the current guidelines, we'd be able to award the same property twice. I don't think there's any rule that says a property can only receive one. No, there, there's a, no, there's a there's stipulation. There. You just getting it twice. You can't do the same thing. You can't do the same project twice. You can't do the same project twice, but you can do the same property. You can have two different projects. Is that right, Josh? Yeah, all I see here is that each eligible improvement will be funded only once. So the improvement itself will be improved as a subset of the property. We've already done a couple of companies twice. Same thing. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to make sure that um, if siding is being addressed to the dollar store and somebody comes out and buys that property and wants to tear it off and do brick, I would not want some something in the way of us being able to Yeah. It will be fine. <laughs> yeah, again, it says exceptions may be made at the discretion. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're close to <laughs> Thank you for writing that so well, Josh. Yeah, I appreciate I, you. I really just cleaned up words that I didn't write this thing. I don't know who did, but whoever did first did all the work. Um, all right, fantastic. Okay, good. Thank you, Aaron. I appreciate that report. Um, in terms of Hampshire's uh, very own, uh, Roy's place is up next. Um, so uh, I don't know if you guys had the opportunity to see Jeannie's most recent um, production. Um, John Blank. And lots. And lots. Um, so obviously Jeannie continues to do fantastic work for us. Um, we did agree to move Mama Tombs is now obviously because of their situation. That was in the last uh, meeting's notes. Um, this that needs to be taken off. So Jimmy's sports bar will sort of move up into September. So take it off. Or yeah, move to the bottom. Take it off for, for now. It needs. To, I think it needs to be taken off. I think there's a question mark it. whether she's reopening or going to sell the business. Or okay. Yeah. 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 Ryan, I think the iron lock is actually coming back. Wait, what's that? That was one of her discussions. Was that she's in talks with the old owners of Iron Walk who uh, want to come back to reopen okay, okay. Iron Walk. But uh, okay. I know that you know, she's she's spending time with family and you know taking care of some personal things. So I think that's why they've been closed. But they're in talks. Um, is that did Jay? Did you say that is done or still in talks? I've been told that it is that it's probably done. Okay. Um. But until that's for sure, we're going to move it. Yeah. So James Motors, we haven't done that. I, I put that on there. Let me just explain why, if you don't mind. Um, I don't know if you've ever done it, but James Motors, I haven't seen it if you have. We did that. Not James. The reason I bring it up is that we're at kind of a, an important point uh, with them, and this would be, be a really good time to feature them in some way. I, I don't rather not go any further than that, but this would be a really good time for them to feel really wanted in, in Hampshire in every way we can possible. Should we move them up to the Mama Tomb spot? <laughs> yeah, we can We can move them to September if you want. I think that'd be great. Okay, okay. call that done. Um, I'll talk to uh, Jeannie, reach out to her on that. And Vico uh, would be the primary contact there and he'll probably uh, Get some comments from from Jim Revilitis, but uh, Vito would be he's he's the general manager, and Vito's also uh, a part owner now, and he's been here three years, and he, and Jim is trying to make him kind of the the more of a point guy in the community. 
So I, you should start with Vito, please. Yeah, yeah, made that note. All right, perfect. We'll definitely do that then. Okay, and then uh, number eight, uh, Jay, do you have anything else you want to share? I know you've uh, sort of uh, drizzled some things into the conversation um, up to this point, but anything regarding Project Battleship that you can share or some of the other significant things? I'll try and be brief, but um, I'll just say this for probably the 20th time. Uh, that I don't think we really need an economic development brochure because they're knocking our doors down right now. And if we had one, I'm not sure we could keep up. It's just a great time to, uh, I, I, it's a great time to be in my job uh, because I'm probably spending 60% of my time on new new projects, which is great. Um, we just in the last week we had, we were contacted by a, a logistics company uh, that's once 300,000 square feet. I would say it's very similar to, I don't know who the company is. I know I have the, their broker. Uh, a major real estate broker, uh, but they've remained anonymous so far, and uh, they're looking for 300,000 square feet on 100 acres, and that's the company that, that that's purely logistics. In fact, they described it as very similar to the Amazon project in uh, Huntley, uh, which is 600,000 square feet. Um, we have uh, a company that uh, it's okay now to talk about what they do. I think it's a pretty exciting thing, very, very uh, clean. Uh, they convert garbage. It's um, Biofuel, biojet fuel. Uh, this is the company based out of California. Um, I've met with them twice in person now at Village Hall. Mike met with them about six weeks ago, and we have a conference call with them and uh, and Dan Light, who owns the 90 acres at um, um, Shireland. So this is a, a really good company. They, they we would be the separating facility. It would be all indoors, and uh, then their refining facility, which is you know a little more maybe not quite as clean a pro an operation would be in Gary, Indiana. And they love our location uh, because they would be receiving semi, not garbage trucks, but semis full of garbage, not recycling, but garbage, all enclosed and all unloaded indoors. So there's no odor and there's no trash or anything. It's a very clean operation. Um, and in fact, there, it takes them almost 18 months to get approved by the IEPA and, and, and get cited. But they, they, they wanted to sign a deal six weeks ago with, um, on the logistics park, but the logistics park has another deal that's probably going to close next week. So I think we'll have we're going to have an 84 acre project that will be transportation at the logistics park in the next two weeks. Uh, we're, we're really close with this um, this biofuels from a biofuel company. That'll be a seventy five million dollar facility, which is huge for our tax base. Um, and they, they want 20 acres. They're looking at the um, uh, the property that um, uh, Dave Ziegler owns uh, just west of the, Met, of the logistics park. Um, and then we've been talking to Dan Light. So we have three major prospects and three great landowners that are ready to work with us. So, Jay, this one in Shireland, uh, it's they separate garbage. Is that? No, I'm that sorry. I, I may have misspoken or maybe I misunderstood the, the, the um, and, and this is something we don't want to get out in the wrong way because if it's misunderstood, it'll, it, it won't sound that clean, but it's a very clean operation. This is a company that takes uh, roughly 100 semis uh, trucks a day. And this is why our Route 20 uh, intersection is so important. We have 55,000. The traffic count at that intersection is 55,000 a day uh, come off of that ramp. Um, the transportation company, which is just a trucking company that appears to be committed to the logistics park, will have about 100 trucks a day coming in and out. That's why it's so important that this is just industrial and commercial up there. We don't really have any, we don't have any residential up there except Jeannie's, uh, excuse me, Susie's neighborhood across the tollway. Um, and uh, so then the, they, the, the biofuel company is looking at the 45 acres that Dave Ziegler owns west of the uh, met, uh, logistics park, uh, so that'd be a great uh, a great fit there. They're looking for 20, 20 plus acres, and he has twenty eight acres. Um, the Shireland property is a logistics company, which is is an Amazon like facility. I don't know who they are, but they are a logistics company. It would have one hundred and thirty semis a day. Um, so we're talking about really turning up the traffic on Route twenty, and you know we're not even close to the traffic count on twenty that would that would justify a stoplight at uh, the entrance to the to the um, logistics park, which is basically the end of Gast Road where the water tower is. So the, the, the more trucks, the more traffic count we get, the better support we're going to get from IDOT. 
So uh, I think we're really positioned really well up there. And, and what's really changed is we now have some property that's for sale and available and actively being marketed. And that's what we didn't have a year ago. So, so tax revenue, I'm just curious for logistics or whatever. Is it strong, light? That's a question. Uh, tax revenue for logistics. Leverage? Yeah, I mean, anytime you put, uh, sure, if we, if we, you know, we don't, you don't get property tax on machinery and equipment. So it's right. the, building, the building is what we care about. Um, so whether it's manufacturing or logistics, it's the investment in the building. Um, they're very similar. Now, yes, in, in manufacturing, there are certain things, you know, you have different firewalls and different fire protection, that sort of thing, depending on what operation it is. So I would say manufacturing is probably a, a bit higher than strictly logistics or warehouse. Um, but, you know, a facility like um, Dayton Freight, for example, right across the street from um, across the parking lot, really, from truck country, they have similar assessed valuations. It's really based on uh, cubic square cubic feet and uh, the value of the building. It's all based on the permit value when they apply for a building permit. That's that's what the assessor uses for her value. Got it. Okay. We do, but indirectly, based on population. Okay, thank you, Jay. Anything else? Does, uh, yeah, I was going to say, you got anything else, Jay? <laughs> that's, that's all I can handle right now. <laughs> I, figured, I figured it sounded like that was a good, that was a pretty decent list. Um, does anybody else have any other um, new business or anything that they would like the board to hear? Well, I had a harebrained idea. And it, I don't like it, but I'm going to throw it out there. <laughs> We've been working so hard to get Ace Hardware cleaned up and sellable. Yeah. Have a crazy idea if we're going to have other businesses downtown to raise that building and have a really nice public parking. I told you I didn't like the idea. Is it? <laughs> Think you I got that in the budget? <laughs> That's not a cheap fun. project. Well, uh, there's, not like, there's not enough parking. Or let it make it a public place yeah like open space open space right. ryan i think there's a pretty good chance that that property is going to change hands in the next six months uh, so i i think uh through that this whole code by we you know we had to go through the code violation to get their attention finally they did the the um facade grant i've spoken to two people now that are interested in that building and uh so i th i think it's a matter of, of the owners becoming realistic about the value and uh, so I think I think we could see some activity there before the end of the year. Right. Okay. But I don't think it's totally here, right? We did talk about that at one point over time. But it's great. It's just yeah, you know, expensive, it's expensive proposition to tear. Um, It'd be a nice location for an incubator. Is it, it would. We talked about that. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody that I talk to says a bakery, a bakery, we got yeah. a bakery. I hear that all I think, the time. Had the conversation with Bonnie Engel. I met with her between mm -hmm. the meetings, and mm -hmm. you know, what is it going to take? Like every time you go on Facebook, every small town around us has new restaurants. New what? What's going on? Like to me, I just cannot figure out for the life of me of why somebody would not want to bring a business where there is population already exists versus going in a really small town. I've seen restaurants, go on Facebook, they're they're all over, you know, whether it's a restaurant or it's a, it's a bakery or it's a, like all these niche businesses. Are we just, I don't know. I don't know, Jay, I'd like to let you answer that question. I mean, I've spent, what, four and a half years now thinking about this issue. Right. And um, it, it seems to be, I think that time is coming for us. Um, I don't know why we haven't had these places filled. We have had some sort of challenging landlords. Um, you know, I think the old pals old place that was challenging yeah. at point. We did bring some real viable businesses. Um, got some new construction that was going in along 72, but you know, the cost that you need to rent a place to cover your investment, you know, on new is different than when you acquire an older building and things like that, where you can rent it for less. Um, I don't know. I think it's a matter of time. I think that we're actually, given what I'm hearing from Jay, I don't think we're that 
that we're that far from seeing a pretty radical transformation of game, which we, I think would include restaurants. But I don't know if you've got any, any other theories. I think Dave's question is valid. You know, my only comment, we don't uh, underestimate what you've already accomplished. You know, the Copper Barrel is a, a very, very nice property. I mean, one of the best around. And that's just come in the last three years. Um, El Salon is is a wonderful facility. That's a new business um, and a new building. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think the SADA grant program, I think, you know, if, if we had the money and could do twice as much in two years, I think we'll have plenty of opportunities to do that. So I, I do think you've already seen a lot of success. Uh, when James Motors moves out of that facility, I think there'll be a lot of interest in that facility. If he doesn't backfill it right now, he's still still talking about backfilling it with another uh, type of dealership. But I, I think you've already accomplished a lot. If you haven't been there, check out Copper Barrel's new patio in the back. It's really beautiful. I heard it's nice. I haven't seen it. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Yeah, it's it's nice. Yeah, it's nice. Okay. Coffee's with that building in Washington. They're going to turn that into a small office suites over there. It's as close to an incubator as you're probably going to see. So it might be interesting for somebody from the BDC to talk to Kelly about that, about what they plan to do with that building. Okay. Good. All right. Anything else? Okay. Not a successful meeting, but at this point, I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion so to adjourn. Second. Can I get a second? I got a second. Uh, all those in favor, uh, indicate by saying aye. 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 That was a very enthusiastic. All those opposed, say nay. All right, the motion, uh, the ayes have it, so the motion carries. That's uh, the end of the meeting. Thank you, everybody, for contributing.